I'm allowing myself to get really, really upset over things that are completely out of my control. See, I recognize this. That's something a therapist would probably say to me, and they're not telling me anything I don't already know. You know what I mean? I already know that. Whatever this shit was my mom is, no matter what the fucking asshole guardian or whatever does, or what, you know what I mean? It's completely out of my control, and I'm allowing it to drive me mad. It, you know... And even in the end, with Social Security, that's not really within my control. I mean, I can try to, you know, get it to go in my favor by really explaining, you know, to the, my therapist that I'm just all fucked up, even worse than when I got on disability two years ago, three years ago, two and a half years ago. No, not even two and a half, less than two. It was November 12th, so we're only in March. Yeah, so we're not even talking two years and four months ago, you know. Um, yeah, I worked myself into a frenzy. I came home yesterday and I just wanted to relax and watch prisoners and eat and drink a little bit and just relax and I got bombarded and I'm like, oh, fuck. As in, by my mom, you know, telling me all the latest shit. And I'm like, oh, fuck, mom. Fuck, I can't do it. I can't do it. Anyway, let's get back to this. Um, check this out, guys. This is, this, look at this. University of Chicago scientists have <coughs> found that even one night of sleep deprivation can raise cortisol levels by 45%. So sufficient sleep, you know, will normalize cortisol levels, allowing the receptors to heal. Dr. Gottfried says, you know, for, for great sleep, she advises eating your dinner three to four hours before your bedtime and turning off TV or laptop one hour before. Maybe I'll try doing this 21 day thing. Maybe I will. Diets are kind of hard for me being a vegetarian because you can't be eating salmon all the time, besides the, or any kind of fish. Besides, you know, besides the fact that it's expensive, you know, all the other fish is cheaper. But you gotta worry about the mercury one. You don't want to be eating fish all the time. And a lot of diets don't want you having beans. So when you're a vegetarian, it's and it's on a diet. It gives alternates to meat, but you pretty much it's either fish. Or eggs, you know. I'm not vegan. You know, I'm vegetarian, so for me it's either fish or eggs because, you know, certain diets don't exactly promote beans. I might try this. I will never do yoga, but Joe loves yoga. <sighs> She's saying that she believes that yoga is Dr. Gottfried, Gottfried. She believes yoga is the best form of exercise for stress relief and getting your cortisol to a sweet spot. She 
He's found that feeling chronically stressed, that's me, chronic stress, it's one of the greatest obstacles to weight loss. She say most of her patients feel chronically stressed. I know. A lot of people just have everyday stress. They're certainly not thinking about suicide on a daily basis and and not living in constant anxiety. Rage. To sum it all up, I'm a fucking mess. That's all. <sighs> Three days is all it takes. Wielding new science shows seeing that gunked up hormone receptors are making women fat, foggy, and fatigued. Sarah Godfried, she developed this plan to help women clean out and heal their receptors to balance their hormones fast. And she says, wow, I can't believe we can change something so fundamental as the hormone and the receptor within just three days. Her 21-day plan features foods that dial down body-wide inflammation and allow your hormone receptors to heal. Oh, and she only lets you have three meals a day, so that will be a new thing for me. I'm used to just eating whenever I feel like eating, even if it's something healthy. She only wants you to have three meals a day. Okay, but she at least lets you have beans. Um, you'll enjoy three meals a day, eating every four to six hours. Each meal should contain 25 to 30 grams of protein from a hockey puck-sized portion of cold water fish like salmon, cod, or trout, or organic poultry. Um, two cups of legumes like lentils, black beans, or chickpeas, or two whole organic eggs plus two egg whites. And then you have 25 to 30 grams of higher fiber carbs, like a small sweet potato or three-fourths a cup of brown rice. One to two tablespoons of healthy fats, like avocados, olives, coconut oil, red palm oil, and two to three cups of produce including turnips, carrots, squash, asparagus, and especially leafy greens. And you want to drink nine eight-ounce glasses of water or herbal tea each day. And if you want to, you can replace one or two meals each day with a shake made with plant-based protein powder. Like purely inspired plant based protein powder, $26 for 21 servings. All green stuff. She wrote, The Hormone Reset Diet. Heal your metabolism to lose up to 15 pounds in 21 days. How come her book says 15 pounds in 21 days? 
and and this has dropped 20 pounds in 21 days. Hmm. Just four women first. Um, being deceptive. So days one through three, you do an estrogen reset. These are all hormones. This is all designed for women. So this is a woman's magazine. It's, it's called for women first. Okay, so anyway, for days four through six, you do an insulin reset. Days seven through nine, you do a leptin reset. Days ten through twelve, you do a cortisol reset. Days 13 through 15, you do a thyroid reset. Days 16 through 18, you do a high reset. And days 19 through 21, you do the final reset. This woman dropped 20 pounds in 21 days. I'm sure Sarah wrote this book, and that's why it says lose up to 15 pounds in 21 days, because most people are not going to drop what this woman dropped. She said starts off heavy. To start off 260 pounds. And you guys know that the heavier you are, the more weight you lose, the faster you lose the weight, too. If I did this for 21 days, too, I can have green tea. It says you can have, you want water and you can have herbal teas. I can have the herbal teas, just not sweet and I really need to have them sweetened anyway. I drink that lemon water, but not so sweetened. Hot water with lemon. up tonight because I wanted to create these videos. Well, obviously. She's like, I think it's essential to be off alcohol for three weeks to really get the best effect on your body. You're not supposed to drink alcohol in any fucking diet. Come on. Oh, that's not true. I have read diets before in these photos where they, they do allow you to have, like, a glass of wine or two or something. Not every night, but... <laughs>
Um, apparently you can use the shell that you use stevia to sweeten your herbal tea. So weird to me, life. Everyone thinks something different. So many people who die, they say it's really good to have, you know, snacks. They usually say three meals and two snacks. Or some people think it's good to eat small meals every few hours. She, This woman believes in three square meals a day and no snacks. It says if the urge to munch strikes between meals, um, she suggests drinking an 8 ounce glass of water then setting a timer for 20 minutes. And if you're still really hungry after that, eat 10 almonds. Because it's a protein rich snack, it will s boost satiety, but it won't cause an insulin spike. I didn't say anything about fruit, though. I'm to have fruit. I'm sure you have to have fruit. No, oh, she didn't. I guess she discovered just green tea because it has caffeine. Favorite herbal tea or hot water with lemon juice? Hmm.
Hmm. I guess she wants you to buy a book. Usually the phone at first will tell you exactly what you should eat, but if she's talking about Stevie and saying Oh no, she says about cinnamon and the insulin reset, sprinkle after you smell it, you smell the urine to banana, so it's a bowl of breakfast porridge. Yeah, she doesn't reveal. In this book. In this magazine, usually they'll give you a sample diet. They didn't do it this time. They didn't give any sample diet, and they didn't. Uh, she wants you to get the book. She's not going to reveal everything, because then why would anybody get the book? Huh. She doesn't give the specific diet. Doesn't say anything about eating fruit. It's not about eating fruit, but it says on the insulin reset, which is days four to six, sprinkle half teaspoon of cinnamon into your smoothie onto banana slices or into a bowl of breakfast porridge. Yeah, she wants you to get the book. Probably will get the book. <laughs> Look at this. Energy now. 80% of women have too much of a common mineral in their system, making them tired. I have too much of life in my system, making me tired.
Zinc helps for depression. Zinc cuts depression risk by 76%. Getting healthy amounts of zinc in your diet can do more than help rebalance copper levels and restore higher energy. Zinc also protects against depression. Women with low intakes of zinc are up to 76% more likely to suffer from depressive symptoms than those who got the highest amounts of zinc. believe zinc boosts the brain levels of the filter brain chemical serotonin. Eighty hmm. percent of women suffer from copper overload. can also be a major cause. It depletes levels of zinc and can increase copper in the body. Three daily servings of zinc rich foods, beef, which I don't eat, fish, and poultry. I eat fish and eat eggs. They want you to limit beans, legumes, whole grains, nuts, seeds, soy, avocados, black tea, and other food I go. <laughs> okay. It's always something. It's always something. Something or something else. I mean, it's just I don't know if I would have bought this magazine if I knew it didn't 
I started to read it in the store and then I didn't finish, but I know it didn't give sample diets. The cheaper magazine, the, the whatever that woman one is. The cheaper one, I always get diets, they always give you the sample diets. They make it so you can buy the magazine and go on whatever diet's being featured. And then, if you want to buy the book, you can go ahead and buy the book. Not this one, it tricks you. Didn't give sample diet, so you have to buy the book to even know what you're allowed to eat. That kind of sucks. Makes me want to buy the book, though. I've never seen anything like that particular diet with the talking about hormones and whatnot. I stay up all night, don't care. Hmm. I'm asleep all day. Right, my mama know not to bother me. I didn't stay up on my computer. I stayed up creating videos. Was that dumb? No. It's all in your perspective, the way you look at it. It wouldn't have happened if I hadn't walked in the door with my groceries all ready to relax and been bombarded by the latest going to bed. So you guys won't be getting these videos until probably late tomorrow afternoon. Considering it's like 5 in the morning. Maybe later.
I have been regretting staying up, but not tonight. I don't regret it. I can't believe that band-aid stayed put in my house. They must have really made it an industrial, you know, really. You know, it's not some band-aid I would buy at the store, probably. Must be a real good band-aid that sticks because, I don't know, I went poo-poo a few times and the band-aid stayed put. Remember, it's in the inner part of my ass. It's not like on the outside cheek. It's it's actually hidden by the folds of ass, you know. It's not there anymore, but the scab is there from where you shaved off the giant skin to look. Um, I'm supposed to change the bandage every day and put a Vaseline on where it is. He wasn't going to take this one off. And he's like, I can shove it off if you know it. And I'm thinking, but do you think it's dysplastic? He's like, no, but you have a history. You've had dysplastic moves, moles removed in those that area of your arm. So if you want me to, I'll do it. And I'm like, you're going to buy up, see it? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, what I wanted to say was, is it going to be covered by my insurance? But it, sh it should be. You know what I mean? It's not for aesthetic reasons. The thing on my ass didn't concern me at all until last summer it started itching me. And then I paid attention to it and I don't want it there anymore. It was irritating me. And I didn't lie. I mean, I've had this thing there forever. I believe it's grown bigger. They do, they tend to do that. These growths from your body are not good. You know what I mean? I had Joe look at my back when I was visiting him. And and, and he'd say, yeah, you, you should have those all up. That's not good, Lord. You should have them all taken off. But the place there, they're like, if you have flat ones, you know, the only way to get rid of them is to dig them out and, and, and have stitches and whatnot. It's a different situation than the ones you can just shave off, the ones that are raised. And she's like, I wouldn't even get rid of them. And I was just inquiring what it would cost. It cost what I figured, you know. A hundred and up to get rid of one. And it's more if you, you know, if they're not the kind you can just shave off. The kind you have to take out, you know. And I told her, I'm like, I'm like, I'm not asking this. Obviously not for aesthetic reasons. I just don't think it's good to have all these growths all over you. our bodies. It's not natural. And I have, as, you, as you've seen from my make, naked moly back, a lot of fucking moles on my back, you know? Mm -hmm. Alright. I told them, like, it's not like I have the money or anything. I'm just curious. What it costs. But I did have the money. Just inquiring. Nothing wrong with inquiring, right? You can inquire about anything. Why open anything? You can go into a store, a fancy store, and there's a, you know? I've seen this in movies. You can try on, like, really expensive dress that you can never afford. Just better be careful. Don't accidentally do anything to it in the store. <laughs> I 
I've never done that, by the way. I've never tried on anything really expensive, ever. Never. How come? I don't know. What's the point? Can't buy it while I torment myself. I know things have to be refrigerated, but people, it doesn't go bad as fast as you think. This is like a sparkling cranberry Newton type drink, you know, so. And orange juice. Vodka. I like the idea of that 21 day thing, it's very simple, you know, no elaborate soups to make, like I had to make with that, my mom did on that three day thing, it looks very, very simple, it might be good to do that, and only eat three times a day, and you know, I might be eating organic, guys, but I'm not, I'm still not eating the way people should eat, you know what I mean? If I want to be healthy, I'm not eating the way I should eat, and I'm eating way too much cheese. Cheese is my weakness, and even when I don't buy it, unfortunately, my mom buys it, and that's the way it goes when you live with somebody, you know? Or when you live with somebody who you can steal food from, you know what I mean? I can have her cheese and I'm just like, well, we'll split the cost of it. We'll split the cost of a lot of things anyway. You know, so even when I don't buy the cheese, I want to be her cheese. Not good. I'm eating too much fucking cheese. And I'm not sleeping enough, not sleeping right. Maybe I should try that three meals a day thing and no snacks. And just, like, I just get her book and read it, and it'll just be for the 21 days. It won't be for the rest of my life, you know. So I would never be somebody who's only going to eat three meals a day. I have to have at least two snacks, some kind of snack, you know. And just three weeks out of my life, I might do it. I try it. So I definitely lose at least 15 pounds. I want to lose like 20 pounds. I think I'm 
I do it? Because it'll force me not to drink when I don't want to drink anyway. It's not like I want to drink. I'm just doing it for the fucking hell of it. You realize that? Drinking for the friggin' hell of it. Not even enjoying it all that much. Just drinking because I'm pissed off at everything. But if I put myself on this rigid thing, this 21 day thing, and commit myself to it for those 21 days, I won't drink. I won't fuck it up, you know? It's not like I have to drink. I went over a year without drinking. That was the longest I'd gone without drinking since I was in college. I went over a year without drinking and then I drank when I... And it was my idea. I drank when I took my friend, you know, the ex-shelter friend, the one. I, I took her for, an, you know, I paid for us to have a two-day Fourth of July weekend. 4th of July, whatever days they were, 2013, and I felt like drinking, I hadn't drank for over a year, but I had, it's not like I had decided, I never claimed I was never going to drink again, I made it perfectly clear to caseworkers, to therapists, whatever, I mean, I never claimed I was never going to drink again, just because I hadn't drank in over a year, I never said I was going to drink again. Okay, so, it's not like I broke anything because I wasn't involved in AA or anything like that. I had never said anything about never drinking again. But I did go over a year, and that was the longest I'd gone since I was in college. No, and I drank all through college. I discovered booze in college when I was a freshman. So going over a year without drinking was the longest I'd gone since when I, before college. I didn't drink when I was in high school. I didn't drink when I was in high school. I know a lot of teenagers do. I see it in movies. They go to parties, underage drinking, all the crap. But I didn't have friends. I didn't do any of that kind of shit. I didn't go to prom, didn't go to any homecoming, didn't go to any of that. I was a loser. Any definition of the word, by any definition of the word, I'm sorry, I was a loser. I had just one friend in Massachusetts from freshman, sophomore, in the middle of junior, and then I had no friends the last year and a half of my high school years. And Florida. 